Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Application Security Controls and Techniques. Today we're going to be discussing secure coding concepts, and then we're going to conclude with some other security controls, techniques, and concepts. I have a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and dive into this session. We're going to begin by discussing some secure coding concepts. Hackers will often focus on applications when they are attempting to breach network security. Because of this, application developers need to focus on security controls right from the beginning of developing the application. This is the idea of using secure coding concepts. An application designed with security in mind is much easier to defend than an application that doesn't use such methods. Two of the main concepts of secure coding are error and exception handling and input validation. Thoroughly testing applications during the development process will catch most errors with the possible exception of some runtime errors. Runtime errors are problems that occur during the operation of an application. Many things can cause a runtime error. They include poor programming, conflicts with other software, including malicious applications, and conflicts with hardware. The developer should put processes in place to trap all runtime errors before such an error crashes the application. Trapping a runtime error requires that the developer intercept the error and display a warning message before the error causes the application to crash. Exception handling is closely related to error handling, except it's a more advanced method of error handling. An exception is just a different term for a runtime error. Exception handling code will use a try-catch block. That means try this code and catch any errors that occur. Usually the try-catch block will provide a means of looping the program until the error condition subsides or goes away. A major cause of runtime errors and other security issues in applications is users inputting invalid data into the application. Secure coding requires that input validation be done before that data is actually placed into the application. Input validation is when the user supplied data is examined against a set of rules that outline what type of data the application is expecting. If the data received falls outside of the rules, it rejects the input and requests that the user input valid data. One method of testing input validation rules is to use fuzzing. Fuzzing is a process that's used during the testing phase of the application. The developer will input invalid or random data into the input fields in order to test the input validation rules. Now let's move on to some other security controls, techniques, and concepts. Client-side and server-side validation are important concepts to understand. With client-side validation, initial input validation should occur on the client machine, that's the requesting machine, before it is sent to the application on the server. This can help to prevent a runtime error or exploit occurring on the server, and as an added benefit, it reduces the amount of traffic that is crossing through a network. If the input checks valid on the client side, additional input validation should also occur on the server side, that's the receiving machine, before that input is passed on to the application. This further reduces the chance of a runtime error or an exploit. Cross-site scripting prevention is also important. Cross-site scripting occurs when a hacker inserts script code into a form on a website so that when other users access the form, the script is executed. Proper input validation of data is usually an effective means of preventing cross-site scripting from occurring. Then there's cross-site request forgery prevention, or XFRF. XFRF is when a user is automatically directed to a linked web page and logged into that web page using data supplied by a cookie from the original web page. 
when this was not the web developer's intent. This can happen during a waterhole type attack. Web developers can help to prevent XFRF from occurring by setting a short expiration time for cookies that they use. Users can also help prevent XFRF by choosing not to have a website automatically log them in when they visit that site. Application Configuration Baseline is the initial setting up of an application, that's the baseline, and it should be done with security in mind. The baseline should be as secure as possible. Another important technique to master is application hardening. This is the disabling of all features and functions that users should not be allowed to access when they are using the application, as in disabling an application's ability to use file transfer protocol. This should initially be done during the configuration or baselining process. Application patch management is another concept that needs to be grasped. New exploits and threats against applications are created all the time, requiring that applications be updated on a regular basis. Patches are used to fix problems, as in security issues, that were unknown at the time that the application was developed. There is a caution though, just as with operating system patches, application patches must be tested before being deployed into a production setting. This will reduce the chances of introducing a new problem or new security issue that might occur if you apply the patch incorrectly. It's important to understand the difference between an SQL and a no SQL database. SQL databases are the most common relational database management system used today. SQL databases are optimized for the inserting and updating of records in a database. No SQL databases are designed to store and retrieve large amounts of data. Think big data. They must be optimized for the retrieval of big data and require different methods of input validation than an SQL database. That concludes this session on application security controls and techniques. We began by discussing some secure coding concepts and we concluded with a brief discussion on other security controls, techniques, and concepts. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope you watch another one soon.